there hello again so this week I want to share with you how I feed my body and how I feel that that impacts my fibro pain as far as I can tell so the way I eat now is the result of a lot of research lots of hours spent on the internet watching videos reading things and just getting to know what so-called experts think about certain things as well as going on gut feelings and sort of researching into those things that I've got hunches or hypotheses about. Now as I want to keep these recordings to 15 minutes or less, I won't have time today to go into the research but I do hope to do that next week, God willing. So the eating that I'm going to share with you and um, that I'm doing at the moment is the result of trial and error as much as anything else and what I'm sharing today is also um, only a regimen that I've been using since about early June this year, so June 2020. Now early June is significant for me because it's the last time I had what I call a fibro episode. That's how I describe a period when I'm not, not able to work because the pains are so widespread and they're not responding to, um, to my meds or any other um, supplements or any other resources that I have access to and I, I physically can hardly get around the house and certainly can't work. So that was the last time I had an episode. That was back in June of this year. So unlike previous episodes, um, in June I had terrible nausea. I was on a walk one morning and I really didn't think I'd get back home. Um, my stomach was distended and I just felt so unwell. I managed to make it home. I didn't go into work that day and for two more than two weeks after that, I couldn't work. And um, this nausea and cramping that I'd never experienced before, I looked into that and it turns out that in addition to all the other pains I've already described in previous weeks, those who have fibro often have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, um, and I hadn't known anything about that. So, and I was under a lot of stress with COVID and working from home and and that seemed to, to, to maybe been part of what triggered this more intense um, and acute bout of fibro pain. So I knew I had to dig deeper than ever before. I had to find a way of tackling not only the, the fibro pains that I was already aware of, but now I had to try to find a way to tackle the digestive issues too. So what did I do? What I did was to overhaul my eating. So here's a slide showing the breakdown of what I eat and when in a typical week. Starting with Sunday, left of the screen, you can see that my first meal is around one o'clock. I'll have a veg and fruit plate, nuts and seeds, and then a hot dish dominated by legumes typically. Here are some examples listed in the bottom left of the image. Now I don't follow particular recipes as such, but will typically use meats and veggies to ring the changes with a variety of beans, peas, lentils, that sort of thing. I like to leave at least five, preferably six or more hours between my first and my second meal. So that I'm usually eating again at around 6.30. I abstain from food for at least 15 hours every day. But as you can see here in, on the left dish, you can see on a Monday I only have one meal. So Tuesday through to Saturday follows a uniform pattern, so I won't go into too much detail. You can see it here. So brunch is late morning gap of about six hours or so, evening meal at around 6.30. My eating is dominated by proteins, veg and legumes. Um, it's low on carbs apart from um, my homemade fermented bread and small amounts of oats. So legumes and veggies have pretty much taken the place of things like potatoes, pasta and couscous. And I was never a fan of rice, but I did like noodles. I don't eat them anymore. When I make pancakes, which I really enjoy, I use either coconut flour or ground almonds. I'm not on keto or Atkins, I want to make that clear, and I don't refer to my eating as intermittent fasting either, because as a believer, I practice prayer and fasting, and I don't want there to be any confusion between the two. So instead, I say that I ensure that I abstain from food for many hours to give my digestion a break primarily. I'll go into that more next week, God willing. But as you can see, I eat about two meals a day, except on Mondays when I abstain for close to 24 hours. In this next image, you can see how I used to eat. Now, I don't blame anyone because it was me who made the decision, but 
Back in August 2018, our organisation provided a wellbeing day for all our staff. And this particular chap who had this nutritional qualification, his own business, he gave a presentation and he said that we should be eating five or six small meals a day and eating all of our fruit first thing in the morning. A lot of what he said just seemed to make so much sense, so I started almost immediately eating in the way that he described, and I did so for well over a year. Now, I mentioned last time that when I went to the GP to begin taking the amitriptyline, I had to have a checkup. The, the nurse took my weight and other, um, she recorded other things, and I was horrified. I couldn't believe it because my weight was 64 kilos. Now, the nurse could tell that I wasn't, <laughs> that I wasn't very happy about it, but she said my BMI was fine, I wasn't overweight, anything like that. Um, I, indeed, I was still fitting into all of my clothes. But all my adult life, I've been around the 55 kilos mark. So I started asking myself these questions. Was that why I was in so much pain? Because my weight had gone up. And was the weight, um, was that what was giving my, um, my fibro this sort of like um, intensity? So these are the sorts of questions um, that I've been asking myself and I'm still trying to work out the answers to. So here in the image you can see that I've just taken Tuesday because it's a typical day um, of how I was eating back then. So I was having fruit and nuts at around 8 o'clock, some porridge a couple of hours later, a vegetable rich salad mid-afternoon, anything I could get my hands on around 5 o'clock by which time I was always ravenous, and then a light protein snack before bed. Now compared to how I eat now, there were very few hours then when I was not chomping on something. And yet I was often hungry in between meals, despite having five of the things. Well, you might not be at all interested, but I've included here um, some pics of the things that I would eat in a typical day. So you can see if we start sort of top left, go clockwise, that's my, that's my typical veggie breakfast plate. Um, although there's some fruit in there, that's typically what I would have at the weekend. I like grapefruit at the weekend. Um, then there's a typical kind of legume stew. This one was with uh, green lentils and chorizo and lots of veg from my own garden. It was yummy. Um, that, then there's the beginnings of my um, vegetable soup and um, a cup of tea and a piece of dark chocolate, just because I thought you might like to see that. So I've already mentioned that I've been plagued with sleeplessness most of my adult life. I've also briefly mentioned that I always feel the cold. Um, it's not terribly cold today, I suppose most normal people would say, but that's why I've got my beanie on, because I'm feeling a little bit chilly today. I've also mentioned that my weight went up by about 9 kilos. Now, there are other things I've noticed a difference in since adopting my new eating regimen, as well as some other things which I'll share with you in a moment. I've noticed that since changing the way I eat, I don't need to take antihistamines to, to make me sleep. Now, I've also said that the amitriptyline um, was supposed to help with sleeplessness. It has in a little bit of a way, not entirely. There, are, there have been nights when I've also had to take antihistamines because I've noticed that um, the amitriptyline alone hasn't been keeping me going through the nights so that there's been um, periods of, of wakefulness. So I always keep them in the house, but since around mid-June, I've noticed that I can, I can sleep, I can sleep nine, ten hours a night, and I can attribute that to nothing else than the way that I've, I've started to eat. So I've also mentioned about feeling the cold. I am warmer. Now, my hands and feet still do feel cold on occasion. They are my extremities and tips of, the tip of my nose. Cut off. My dad, my mum used to say, I have a puppy dog's nose, it's always cold, um, but actually, mm, yeah, it's actually reasonably warm at the moment. Um, there are occasions when I'm just sitting reading, for example, I can feel the heat like radiating out of the palms of my hands. That is, that is big news for me. I, I never feel that warm. The only time I've ever felt as warm as that was when I used to run, and I once I've been running for say three or four kilometres, and my hands would just be so warm. Um, so something is going on inside me to generate that level of heat because I don't run anymore. My body doesn't like me running. So um, my, my feet as well. I don't know how many years it's been that I, I have to go to bed 
um, most of the year with some sort of covering on my feet. Lately, I found I'm sticking my feet out from under the quilt in the, in the night because my feet are just too warm. So that's, that's another thing. So the, the sleep um, and the heat. Now, I've never said in any of these films that I, um, or I haven't really referred so much to my own experience of fibro fog. I have mentioned it, in the, I think it was the first film I did, as being one of the symptoms or outputs of fibro. What I'm finding since I started to change the way I eat is I'm sharper. For example, if I go, if I drop something, I'm peeling something and it, it, it falls out of my hand, I am far more likely now to be able to catch it mid-fall. That's something that's just a very definite, you know, things that are, are mid-air and I'm like able to catch them. My gosh, I almost feel a bit like Spider-Man, you know, the beginning when Peter Parker discovers or is beginning to discover his, his superpowers. I'm not suggesting I have superpowers. Um, I've lost the weight that I gained. I'm back to about, I've got some scales now. I rarely, I rarely use them. But the last time I checked, I was about 56, 57 kilos. So I've lost the weight and I don't count calories or anything like that. My stomach, my goodness, my stomach is so much better. I hardly have stomach ache these days. I'm very regular bowel movement wise. We have to talk about these things, we're British. Um, and my stomach is flatter. Now, most of my adult life I've had um, a bit of distension in the evenings, having had the meals through the day, um, and especially around my period as well. But come the morning, I'd be flat. I'm much more likely to be flat, flat stomached. Um, now that I'm eating in this way. So stomach ache much better, less bloating, so I'm really very much happier about that. And I haven't had a fibro episode since June, since the episode I've just described to you. So I can see many benefits from, um, from eating the way that I do. So what is my conclusion? Well, trial and error has brought me to this place. I don't keep avid um, notes on, on what I've eaten in a day. I don't, for example, keep a food diary or check my weight every day. I don't have any of these gadgets that take my, um, my pulse or my glycemic index check, nothing like that. It's just I, I tend to observe patterns and, and what I can see is that since I've been eating this way, um, and what I find is that it's a sustainable, practical, manageable and affordable and dare I say pleasurable way of eating. I can see many benefits such as I've already mentioned. It's helping me across a number of health issues that I've struggled with for years and I've got more energy and more time because I'm not spending so much time either preparing for or eating meals or cleaning up. After, after meals, so I've reduced the number of times I have to eat and prepare food, so that's great. Um, so next week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hopefully share with you the, the health practitioners and the experts and what have you, um, who I've gone to, and I'm not widespread. I don't go to hundreds of different sites and read up on different things. I tend to have sort of, I'm quite loyal, I tend to have three or four people that I listen to because what they say makes sense. Now, you might think, well, when you had that well-being day in 2018, you thought that made sense. Yeah, you'd be right if you were, you were thinking along those lines. You're right, I did think, well, that sounds good, and I adopted it straight away, so I can be influenced, um, but I can also find those patterns, and, um, and I'm being much more sceptical these days, and I will try things. Um, I'm no faddist, so like I say, I'm not interested in going on keto or Atkins, there's nothing that I keep out of my diet, even though I don't eat sugar, still there are sweet things, I have a bit of honey or marmalade on the weekend or something, so I'm, I'm not extreme in that regard, so when people are sharing their, their thoughts and opinions, I am quite sceptical, I'm running it through my own experience now, I'm being a bit more cautious um, in terms of what I will pick up on and what I will run with and what I will adopt into my life. So as a caveat, I must say this, please don't assume that I know what I'm doing in regards to fibro. I haven't had it all that many years and um, I'm still trying to figure things out. 
I had an episode back in June and it's now what mid to late September so I'm in no wise um, an expert on this but I have found some things that are definitely working and those are the things that I hope to share with you I would just say to you um, I've done my research but my life is not a lab um, I don't have control measures um, I don't have another Lydia um, in which to have the placebo with um, it's all happening here trial and error um, and I only get one shot at the things that I do but I do go on my gut and I do go with, or quite literally, and I do go with um, with how I'm feeling and whether or not I'm in pain. And um, I would say that the way I'm eating is, is brilliant and I intend, God willing, to carry on eating this way until such time as it's not suiting me. So I would say please do your research. Um, what works for me might work for you, but then it might not work for you. But I know that the way I'm eating now is working, working for me. And, and I believe that the five meals a day regimen that I was using back in 2018 and for a year and a half or so after that time, at least, because I've been working towards this, I guess, for a few months, um, that was overloading my digestion. It was spiking my blood sugar and basically asking too much of my liver and my gut to deal with. Um, I was eating carbs far more bread than I do currently. I would have bread two, three times a day. And um, I send baked potatoes, noodles, pasta, shop-bought quiches, the odd pie. Um, so we don't know yet what might be the, the trigger for fibro. It might be um, a reaction to inflammation. Um, and, and perhaps my old diet was, was an inflammatory um, diet, I don't know. Um, was it giving opportunity to that inflammation to come into my body and create that pain and, and, um, and, and gut irritation and all of those other things and the nausea? I don't know, but like I say, next week I hope to share with you what the research has shown me and what some of the experts are saying, which to me I know I can prove um, is effective in my own life. So please do um, do your own research. Start now, why not, if you haven't already. I hope this is an encouragement to you. Look at what you eat, when you eat it. Lots of people who know about these things say that good health is 80% diet and only about 20% exercise, which when I first heard that, I was like, oh, right, okay. But diet is medicine, sorry. Food can be medicine. And so the way that we have, the way we structure our diet can either be bad for us or it can just create well-being. Um, I feel wholesome, I feel well at the moment and I put that down to not just what I eat but when I eat and when I don't eat. So as I say, hope to share with you all the research that has been useful in bringing me to this point next week, God willing. So between then, now and then, um, do take good care. Bye-bye.